Well, it is upon us. We are at the time of the final monster hunter. Uh, we are at the time of the final monster hunter digital event. This is going to be interesting. Um, the fuck? <laughs> is that an AR monster hunter thing? Nyanic, yeah. Alright, this was the thing that we knew about already, right? Yeah, there has to be a picture they're showing it here. What is this? I think it's in a Monster Hunter Now, I think it's called, right? Yeah, Monster Hunter Now. Now! Give it to me now! It's coming in September. Okay. But yes, all we know for sure is that with this bonus update, we saw something that looked like a... A little bit of Malzeno's wing and like a bit of like one of its like a bit of its body. So I'm just all I'm really guessing is that it's a Malzeno subspecies of some kind. And I'm gonna guess we might get um, a couple more like risen, maybe like another risen elder dragon form. And that's about it. Although the, I think. We've gotten risens of most of the uh, elders, because I don't know if sh if a chaotic gore should really get one, because chaotic gore is not really an elder dragon, because it's not at the Shigaru level yet. Uh, the only thing I could maybe see them trying is maybe a Matsu, but I highly doubt it when it comes to risens. I could be wrong though, they could they could just say fuck it, we'll just do one for chaotic gore and then I want to kill myself. Cause chaotic gore is already a pain in the ass. <laughs> I just wonder when the release date's going to be for this. I'm gonna imagine it's probably gonna be within like the next week, if I have to take a guess. So Anywhere between like today and a seven day period is like where I'm guessing. That that's where my guesstimation lies. <clears throat> Pause this real quick. Uh, just let you know I'm recording because it's the last digital event. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> of course, of course. I, I was. I figured you would have wanted to get with you to see if we, you wanted to watch it together. Yeah, sure, dude. Like, I'm, I'm just kind of giving my. I was just giving my thoughts and how it's just like. Um, <clears throat> I have a feeling, right? It's just like it's probably gonna come out within either like within a span of today or the next seven days. We're definitely gonna see something about that. Uh, Malzino variant and we might get another Risen although there's no other Elder Dragons left outside of like maybe a Matsu but I doubt they would do a Matsu or they could just prove well, me wrong and just do Chaotic Gore even though Chaotic Gore is not an Elder Dragon I mean we still do have Velcana that they added with Vel the oh, I forgot Velcana it might be but oh Risen Velcana sounds like it's gonna be a pain <laughs> that sounds horrible did you see that little thing that they showed off for that Monster Hunter Now, by the way? Honestly, I'm thinking, with seeing the little blurb, I'm thinking about picking up Monster Hunter Now, honestly. Ah, the Fluffy Buddy Dongo song. Um, so, I'm hoping, like, I doubt it, but I'm hoping that we get more than just whatever this variant is. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Ten seconds to the rest of Monster Hunter Sunbreak. <laughs> Happy hunting. Happy hunting.
<laughs> that little happy hunting was adorable. Yeah. I think Sunbreak is what is Rise is what two years old now? Something like that. And Sunbreak is about a year. Hmm. Hey everyone, I'm Yozo Tsujimoto, producer on the Monster Hunter series. Hello, Mr. Tsujimoto. I'm Takei Suzuki, the director on Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. It's almost been almost a year. June thirtieth. Oh, damn. <laughs> A lot of players have decided to continue their adventures from Rise, and we are very... Oh, you're, yeah, yeah, we continued it, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Both oh. me and you are almost HR 600 now. Yeah, over 800 hours in, in Sunbreak alone. <laughs> well, Rise oh. plus Sunbreak. Yeah, yeah like... It's been a great time. We've had a lot of ups and downs in Monster Hunter. The wirefall mechanics specifically for you. Yeah, my god. <clears throat> Additional monster. It's time to end this. Primordial Malzano. Ooh. Hi, big fella. He's pretty. I can't wait to fight him, Cody. It's gonna be good. Tomorrow, oh, aka fuck, for a, aka probably for us later today, because <laughs> you know Japan time. Ooh, primordial Malzano looks fire, though. I wonder if he's gonna be like a white dragon equivalent, mm -hmm. right? Bonus update version 16, available on June 8th, 2023, will add the final monster, Primordial Malzino. Oh, man. Originally, Amatsu, which was added in title update 5, was... So see, that makes sense, because Amatsu is Black Dragon level. Yes, yeah. But we decided to do a bonus update to introduce Primordial Malzino, improve armor augmentation with new slots, Bro. and add several new... Primordial Malzino, I feel is about to have some fucking crazy armor set skills. Right? For the currently available title update 5, the story centers around the villagers of Komura taking on Anamatsu. But in this bonus update, you'll get to witness the conclusion to the age-old relation between Malzino and the kingdom. You can take on Primordial Malzino... Of course, it's MR10. It's always MR10. <laughs> we hope you look forward to seeing its new moves and ecology. Oh, look at that armor set! Ooh. Armor using its materials as well so don't miss out event quest and DLC okay after the bonus update there will be new event quests until July 20 all right so we got some good a good amount of content coming out 20 more days worth of uh event quests Ooh, that's a pretty oh <laughs> armor Ooh, I like that earring that's a nice earring as far as paid DLC goes, as of version 15, the total lineup is complete. But version 16 will introduce DLC packs with a variety of themes for an affordable price. Okay. We hope you take this opportunity to try some of it out. Of course, we get into them releasing Sunbreak to the, uh... PS... Everything else. Yeah, that's not already out. And Sunbreak are also available on Xbox, Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Windows, PS5, and PS4. PlayStation 4. Yeah. Remember when Sun when Rise was supposed to, was initially just going to be a, a Switch exclusive and people bitched about that? <laughs> yeah, still would be nice if they would make it crossplay so we could play with our friends who have it on other systems. Yeah. Cut. They use the uh, chip. Yeah. Yasunori Ichinose, the director of Monster Hunter Rise, for a nice three-way conversation. <clears throat> Mr. Ichinose, everyone. 
Uh, I was gonna do my own introduction, but good to see you, everyone. I'm Yasunori Ichinose, director on Monster Hunter Rise. I think this is going to be the last digital event for Rise and Sunbreak, so there's a lot I'd like to talk you about. You think? And I what, you know? <laughs> You're the one who probably comes up with these fucking things. And before and before they release another uh, digital update, releasing Yamatsu Kami. Uh, I wish. Right. God, that'd be so cool. When we did rise and showed off canines for the first time, we got a lot of reactions saying how cute they were. They are pretty cute. And since the monsters are based on yokai, some people wondered, what's this monster based on? And if they're going to bring back this monster, what yokai is it going to be based on? And so on. And I was surprised at how many people guessed it right. <laughs> It was a lot of fun to watch. What about you, Mr. Suzuki? For Sunbreak, I decided to bring back a monster from Monster Hunter Frontier, Espinus. That was like the most hype revelation when we saw that in Sunbreak. We got so yeah. much fan feedback that the term even started trending for a while. Nobody saw that one coming. We pretty much had to recreate him from scratch. And the staff was very particular about getting him right. Oh, you got him right, all right. You oh, got yeah. him right. Great fight. Love his armor. Love the look of his armor set. Hell, to this day, I still use the uh, Espinas uh, waist piece in my layered armor loadout. Well, I can't disclose any specifics about the main features in advance, of course. But I still wanted to reveal some things before each update to get the fans excited about new upcoming features. I wanted them to imagine what kinds of things we were cooking up. So occasionally I'd let some pretty big hints slip through. Of course, you have to be very careful. Like, <clears throat> how much can I say? Can I get away with this without getting yelled at? There were times when I was treading on thin ice, but I mainly focused on info tying into the next update, while mixing in a variety of trivia. We also released some illustrations hinting at new monsters on Twitter and stuff. The ones you drew, right? No, that wasn't me. They were made by one of the <laughs> sample sheet. So I asked uh, them, them, and I just put them up like that. I figured I'd be safe as long as I didn't say this monster will be in the game. It was more to show off what kind of ideas we had. There were a lot of people comparing their speculations to the actual announcements. And then there's the hunting guy. <laughs> Mr. Ichinose actually provided a lot of backup in coming up with ideas for the content. So it wasn't just me doing it alone. But Mr. Ichinose and the promotional team helped out a lot, too. You actually did a lot behind the scenes for Sunbreak on social media. That's right. For some reason, my schedule just said recordings. Nobody ever told me anything about what we were doing. Yeah, we wanted you to show up in some of our clips. So when we were making Sunbreak, I approached Mr. Suzuki with some ideas of my own. Like, hey, it would be great if you could add this character to Elgato. And there were some ridiculous requests in there. <laughs> I was surprised at how many ideas he actually ended up using. Initially, we were just going to place them around the canteen. But before we knew it, they were at the quest counter and the research lab. There were paintings all over the place. And they do change as you progress in the story. So if you've played the game and haven't noticed yet, you should try playing again and paying attention to the details. From the beginning? Yep, from scratch. I see. There's a lot of variety. No, I'm not starting your game over just to see the fucking paintings change. Do you have any 
particular favorites among the cast? I think I'd like to hear from Ryozo before we answer. Yes, me too. All right, I'll go first. I would pick Bahari from Sunbreak. Bahari is a good choice. He's involved in the story. Bahari is a good character. But he's actually kind of goofy. And he's in a lot of cutscenes as well. That's right. He's actually one of the more prominent characters in cutscenes. Yes. What about you two? I really like Tadori. Tadori is another solid choice. Indeed. You know who that is, right? Of course, of course. These creatures consume life. Of course I know them. <laughs> These creatures consume life. Why did you have to say that twice? These creatures... Consume life. I really love that cutscene. I watched it so many times. It's a cutscene that seems so significant, right? Didn't we use this for a trailer? We did, we did. That's correct. It was an easy to use line. I. I really like Master Utsushi. Haha, <laughs> you're here! <laughs> He's a really prolific and experienced hunter, but he never brags about his own strength. He treats everyone completely equally. And you can tell he really loves and cares for his favorite pupils. We even received Valentine's chocolate for him. That's right. <laughs> I was surprised. A lot of fans sent in Valentine's chocolate for Master Utsushi. So I immediately asked one of the designers to make a thank you illustration. So every time she would draw something super fast a couple of days in advance, and every time we would put it up on social media. That's right. That's kind of cool. Moving on, considering that you've right. been working on these games for so long, there must have been a lot of ideas that ended up not making it in. Ones you can talk about? I'm not sure I can talk about any of them. No? Then anything you can just share a little bit of? So, Elgato Outpost has a leader called Admiral Gallius. And initially, he was going to be a silent character. Wouldn't say a single word. But he's central to the plot development, right? So, he'd be standing right in the middle of the council meeting area, while Fiorain would be doing all the talking next to him. So, for instance, she'd say, we have to hunt this monster next. And she'd explain how to fight it and then go, right, Admiral? And he'd just nod with a grunt. And she'd go, understood, Admiral. Now, let us sally forth, fierce flame. And this would keep happening. So it turned into kind of a skit. With Fiorain just looking for the right answers from someone who doesn't talk. <laughs> Which doesn't make for a compelling conversation. So we axed it. I guess I went a little too far there. There's this guy inside Bahari's research lab, right? During development, you could talk to him from atop the roof and it would show his name. So I was like, he has a name? Of course he was removed later, but I was impressed at how detailed it was. That he even had a name. Yeah, it should be gone now, though. He's a very thorough bug checker. You can talk to him from up there? Hey, Suzuki, why can I talk to this guy? <laughs> Today's show is a special occasion to bring you new information about the bonus update, which is why we invited Mr. Ichimose and Mr. Suzuki over. And I'm glad we were able to share all of this with you. To close things off, both directors have a final comment for all of you. Since Rise was released, we've been getting lots of fan feedback on social media and various other places. And we are very thankful for that. All of us here on the dev team will keep doing our best to deliver quality content to you. So we hope you keep enjoying the game for a long time to come. Thank you very much. I was handed the baton from Rise and got to work on Sunbreak, and I've been overwhelmed by all of the positive comments. 
which have given the dev team the motivation to keep working hard to bring you new content like all of the updates. I'd like to once again express the team's appreciation to all of you. Thank you. That about wraps things up for this event. It's been a little over two years since Monster Hunter Rise was released, and about one year since the release of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. We are all very thankful for the huge number of people who played these games. So, from all of us here on the development team, thank you very much. Next year will be the 20th anniversary of the Monster Hunter series. We're going to keep doing our best to bring you new and exciting games, so we hope you'll continue to support 20 us years of Monster Hunter. I'd like to close things off with our usual chant. Happy <laughs> hunting! I'd happy how to put a little smile on my face, I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. Alright, time for some stats. Jesus. That's a lot. <laughs> Here comes the your hunting spirit. March 26th is when Rise came out. Damn. Yeah, a couple of... Like a week or two after my birthday. I remember I got my copy a few days late because there was a shipping error at GameStop. <laughs> and I refused to touch Sunbreak until you got yours. Or I refused to touch Rise until you got yours. Like, I straight up refused. I needed my hunting partner. <laughs> Fuck you, Bushi and Narwa. Third, Rathian. Yeah. yeah, that tracks. Yeah. Narga, that also tracks. Yeah. Is yeah, it... that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I alone have like 90 something Magnamalos hunted. <laughs> 62 million people have beaten Narwa. Holy fuck. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Palamutes have a lot more versatility. Well, the, uh,. The palicos have more utility and people find the versatility better. <laughs> yeah. 5.1 billion wire bugs collected. Jesus. 12.1 billion palamutes, right? Ridden. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go for to a new hunting world. Yeah, that track, Scarlet Feast, is a is a fucking great track. It is. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, this has got me in a hunting mood now. Da, 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 Top three Sunbreak monsters hunted. One of Third, them is going to be Malzeno. Steven. Second, Luna Garen. First, Rab. Oh, really? Dame? Uh, I get. Well, no, the yeah. Top. Yeah. Anomaly investigations of the top hub quest. Oh, no. The amount of cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I can guarantee over half of those are me. Hunter voice. Switch skill. Jesus. 25. 6.8% people use great sword. Popular is your their blaze. Strong arm stance makes sense. Long sword. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. Blade Luna still finds Sakura. I know that's one of my favorites. SNS, okay. Dual Blades, 13. Yeah, that's that. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair, those are the, probably the uh, best fire. Ooh. Not a lot of Lance users, huh? Damn. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of Gun Lance users either. Yeah, just barely more Gun Lance users than Lance users. Damn. Man, not too many, uh, uh, Hammer Bro representation. 
Hunting horn is used a lot less than I thought it was. Swax. I have a feeling heavy bow gun's gonna be up there. Right. Yeah, that that tracks with Glaive not having many representation. They did kind of Glaive did get kind of a nerf. Whoop. Hey, you're in third place with your light bow gun. Hey, let's go. Wow, beats heavy. Nice. <laughs> And Hyperion being the best bow. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, that tracks. Fiorain's great. Love her. Lucian. <laughs> <laughs> yup. All of that tracks. Yeah. Hinoa's fucking bonus special skill is too good not to have. Right. That's a lo that's a lot of completed quests. That's a lot. So what say after this, we, me and you go fight some things? You good dancing? Okay. Oh god, the lobbies. Oh good god! You know, Cody, you want to know what's fun? What's that? My, uh, the player house that they give you, so both the ship and the house in Kamara, mm -hmm. still has those old pictures hanging up from when we first started Rise. <laughs> oh my god. It's still going. <laughs> it's, it's still going. You know, as frustrated as we get with this game, it is still a great game and has brought us some great memories. Just all the Monster Hunters we've played throughout the years. Damn, I didn't expect the end of a Monster Hunter presentation to, uh... Make me feel emotions. <laughs> right? Like I'm sitting uh, here going back I'm sitting here going back to the first time that me and you played for uh that you Leon buddy got me into four ultimate. God, and... I like I'm just sitting here like I started Monster Hunter back on the Wii U with three ultimate. I didn't get it very far. I then got four ultimate and generations on 3DS, and then I was eventually I was eventually able to start playing online, and that's why I started playing with Leon and Buddy and Dez and Sadet and everybody, and it's just like just all the all the memories I've had with Monster Hunter are mostly positive ones, and there are some negative Nancys, <clears throat> Barry off, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, um, I love like, this game series. I didn't, start, I didn't start the Monster Hunter gig with you guys until Four Ultimate, but um, I still remember struggling. Like it, it seems so fucking long ago, but I remember struggling with fucking Great Jaggy. Remember, you also struggled with um. The gore that was on the ship. Not even, like, the gore quest, just the gore that was on the ship. <laughs> I struggled with that a little bit. I struggled with my first Shigaru in 4 Ultimate for a long time. To be fair, I had a... It took me a little bit to beat gore, like, just the quest in 4 Ultimate. Because it was a, a big situation of... Um, I was just still not that great i didn't beat gore in four ultimate till i got to, to him in generations and beat him and then i kind of knew it's like oh i can beat this guy and then i went back to four ultimate and beat him and it was not long after i think i had made it all the way past shigaru before i actually started playing online with everybody so 
Monster Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is what got me over my fear of crabs. Mainly because the crabs fucking made you stop being scared of them. <laughs> like, like, when I first had to fight Diamo in the, uh, in D Dundromo, uh, uh, for the Dundromo Village quest, I contemplated quitting the game there because big crab. And then here you are, that same game when you were trying to learn Hunting Horde a bit and you had two fucking purple damios just coming for you. God, they would they not leave you alone. <laughs> uh, I'm over here loading on to Monster Hunter Sunbreak now. I am too. Oh. Uh.